Hi, my name is Jamie, and if you're anything like me, you're about to start a new semester in school. I'm starting a new graduate semester, but maybe you're an undergraduate school, or maybe you have a bunch of conference dates you need to add, or a bunch of different meetings for project. But the main thing is, is it's so tedious to add a bunch of calendar events, right? Am I right? Um, I mean, you have to click the title, then you, it's just a lot of clicking, clicking from the different times, the different guests or locations, descriptions. And for a lot of things, you can't just hit repeat, right? You can't just do weekly repeating, especially if the, the names of the events change or you want different thing information in the description. You can't just add one event and hit, you know, every week. There's a solution. We're gonna bulk add calendar events into your calendar. Now this works with every calendar that I'm aware of. It works on Microsoft, it works on Apple, it works in Google. Um, Apple is a little bit different because it doesn't like to play well, but, um, but there's a workaround. So let me show you how I've learned to do this. Um, I am going to include in the below links, close that, the Google instructions for how to do this, I think you can probably Google to see what the Outlook ones are. Um, they're all very similar with some small differences. Um, the problem is I found that it doesn't kind of walk you through the things you should be aware of, the problems that you might face when you're doing this. So let me walk you through it and um, yeah, we'll get there. So the starting point is with a Google Sheets. Well, I use Google Sheets. Um, you can use Excel or Numbers. Um, the thing is, this top row of columns has to be exact. You need to make sure the subject, like the spelling, the spacing, the capitalizing, capitalizing, capital letters, everything needs to be exact. Otherwise, it won't translate when you import it. So just really hone in on this. Now these are the, um, the columns that I have used. You don't actually need an end date if you're not doing any multiple day events, but I included it there so you can see. So if you have um, something that is multiple days, you can add that. Um, now, here is what I have done for the fall. I just recently imported all or typed in all of my semester dates. Um, and the, one of the reasons I don't like to repeat events in my actual calendar is because I like to have the different week numbers in because that's how my instructors tend to work by. I also like to include different information in the descriptions, which you can't do in repeating events. So um, yeah, that's why I like to do it this way. Um, now a couple, one thing that you really need to be aware of is you need to make sure that all the applications you're using from your spreadsheet to your calendar are all in the same time zone. So for Microsoft 365, you're going to want to make sure that that time zone that you have set for your, is for Outlook and Excel are both the same. Especially for me, I need to make sure my Google Calendar and Google, um, main Google ID is set in the same time zone as my, um, for me, Apple ID. That is the biggest hiccup I ran across. I couldn't figure out why my calendar events were coming in at different times than what I had started with. So time zone, keep that in mind. Now, when you're adding dates and times, be very careful. Make sure that if you have a start date and an end date that they are the same. I mean, just, just be, be very detail oriented. If you detail oriented here, then you don't have to worry about when they're actually in your calendar. Now, one thing that looks like a drawback to this is it looks like you can't put much information in the description, whereas you can in um, like a normal calendar event, right? Um, but there is a way around this, which um, I'm gonna delete that so I can show you how to do it. Um, so I like to include not just the readings, but um, you know, a in little information I have. So let's say that this is this is the first reading that I have due for that day. Um, but this is the second one, and I want to add it. So I'm going to copy, and I could just 
add it here, but then it all just runs together, right? And I, I like it to look a little bit better than that. So instead, doesn't want to undo. Instead, we're going to hit enter, but you can't just hit enter or return, right? Because if you hit enter return, it goes down to the next state. What you wanna do is when you go into the cell, hit option or alt and then return. And that gives you another line within the same cell. Now when you paste, it's on a different line. You could even add lines in between. So if you want duple, double lines so that it's a little bit spread out more in your description, you can do a lot more um, that way to make it look a little bit better, at least for me, that's how I like to do it. Um, okay, so once you have all your dates in there, you can download it. Well, in the case of Google Sheets, you're going to download as a CSV file. If you're in Excel or Numbers, you're going to want to save it as a CSV file. This allows it to communicate with things um, across proprietary stuff, right? Um, so download it as a comma separated value document. I always like to just put it on my desktop. I'm not going to be using it for long. OK, now you're just going to import it. It's not hard. Go to your calendar, um, especially for Outlook. You might need to look around to the settings and stuff, but you're going to want to import it, right? Simple, easy peasy. Here's a little pro tip. Do not import it directly into your general calendar. Create a new calendar. So for instance, here, you know, you have all these different, well, they call them calendars, but different list items. I created a new one, um, 2020 fall. Um, I did that by clicking add other calendars. I'm not gonna do that here because it shows my email address. I don't really wanna show you that. So I'll show you a screenshot. Add the calendar, um, add the name, the description, check your time zone, and then hit create calendar. I named it fall 2020. So it's right there. Now to import, you're going to want to go up to settings, wherever your settings is, and then import and export. Select your file. Uh, where'd it go? There it is. Yeah. Select your file. Make sure your name doesn't get covered up by the recording button. Um, make sure you add it to your new calendar. I don't know if I mentioned this. One of the reasons I do this is because if something goes wrong, I can just delete the calendar and don't have to go through my main calendar and delete each event individually. So create a new calendar every time. Then just hit import. So it imported 25 out of 25 events. If it doesn't say that, <laughs> you've got a problem. And then if that's if you have a problem, just go back, find your calendar, if there's a problem with it, and delete it. Not a problem, redo it. So now all of these calendar events are on my calendar. For me though, I use Apple. I like the Apple calendar. So this isn't good enough for me. Um, I need to get it into Apple. Now the only way to get it into the Apple calendar is to put it into a Google calendar first. Now once you're in, it's in a Google calendar, you go into your, to the calendar, um, Oh, where'd it go? Again, I'm not going into it because I don't want to show you my email address. But you just go into your calendar and then, well, actually, let me start over. You need to quit your calendar. You need to make sure you're restarting your calendar because this will refresh the calendar items. So once you've quit your calendar, restart it. it might take a few seconds, but eventually your new calendar is going to show up here. And then you're going to be able to just click select and your new calendar items will all show up. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is when you want to import your 
Google Calendar into your Apple Calendar is you need to make sure that your Apple ID is connected to your email, your Google email address. Um, that's the only way that these two can communicate. And that's how you import a bunch of calendar events all at once without having to do each one individually. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Any other tips or tricks to help other people? I know we all are looking for new organizational methods, especially when it comes to adding a bunch of calendar events. Good luck to you in your new semester.